What's up, guys? This is Coach Grant with First Down Training, and today we're going to be breaking down some of Travis Fulgham's route running. We're going to be talking about some of these clips from him at the Senior Bowl. We're going to break down a clip that he ran against the um, Steelers a couple weeks ago, and then we're going to be talking about how you guys can get some separation on these routes and how you guys can use your head and shoulder movement when you restack a DB to create some separation and some moves at the top of the route that will get you space and mainly going to focus on the three phases of the route, okay? And guys, again, if you're a receiver and you want to get better hands, you want to improve your catching ability, check out that link in the description. It says improve your hands in 30 days, full 30-day program for any receiver who wants to improve their hands quarterback no quarterback whatever you guys have it's a perfect program for you to really work on your hand-eye coordination grip strength and all the above hope to get you guys on that soon let's get started so first things first we're going to be looking at this comeback here okay so this comeback is important um Number one, just got to sell vertical, right? If we could sell vertical and we could get this guy to believe fade, we want to make this DB believe fade 100% of the time. And then what Full Game does a great job of is peeking back with his eyes and selling this route, right? So let's watch this thing full speed. So again, coming off the line, giving this little quick starter step. Then I peek back with my eyes, snap this thing off, and I'm out of this break. Unfortunately, the ball is thrown a little bit high, but we do have some separation, right? This is enough separation, especially at the level that he's playing at, right? Being a bigger, more physical guy, and especially when we sell vertical like this and we're able to cut on a dime, quarterback puts this thing on us, that's a lot of separation and that's enough room for me to work, right? Because these windows get smaller. As you guys get older and older and older, and a lot of youth guys watch this stuff, high school, college, as you get older and older and older, the windows just keep getting smaller, right? So we got to make sure that we take advantage of the separation that I have, and especially when this DB does not have hands on me, I got to do as much as I can to create as much separation as possible. So now, when I come off the line here, again, not really too worried about the release, That, but the only thing that I want to talk about with the release, you see, he's not taking forever, right? He's not doing this real long, developed release because why this is a long route this is a comeback route he's probably breaking it like 15 back to 12 i would assume i didn't actually count the yardage here but again when we're breaking this thing whether it's 16 back to 14 15 back to 12 even 12 back to 10 it's a longer developing route quarterback's going to take this drop but he wants this thing out of his hands right now because he's obviously getting a pass rush i can't take all the time in the world right here i maybe attack him i give him a quick little stutter step let's take the outside release and let's get up into the route right because timing matters on this play if you guys are running a comeback most likely you're a first or a second can read right so like the thing about it is that you're never a quarterback's never going to throw a comeback late he's never going to throw a comeback across the field third or fourth three he's not going to go from one to two to oh, okay there's the comeback so you guys don't have time to work this kind of a release quarterback's probably looking comeback first from one to two you're probably the first read to the second read right so we got to make sure that we give him something quick off the line of scrimmage and get up into this thing so full does a great job of that pushes up to the outside now you see when he's here he doesn't just hug the sideline he works to restack what so many people do is when they get off the line and they're able to create the separation. They're able to get the DB a little bit off balance, and he's reaching, and they take the outside release easy. They just continue on this path to the outside. But the thing is, what is this DB's responsibility, especially in man coverage? His job is to force you to the sideline. His sideline is his help, right? So if he can force you to the sideline as much as possible, that's going to get us off of this. Pl- that's going to get us off of our route. Going to get us off of our rhythm, and we're not going to be in the right spot when the quarterback needs me to be there, right? We're going to be in that spot too early. Quarterback won't be able to give me the ball, and then I'm not going to get this ball because I don't have the correct timing with him. Or this DB's going to be able to make a play on it because he's short in the field. So when we get this outside release, let's make sure I work to restack. Now, when I'm working to restack and I'm approaching my depth, you see how he's in full stride. This is a great job being in full stride here. Now, when he peeks back for this ball, that makes this DB overcommit. That makes that DB a little bit greedy, like, oh, crap, he beat me on this fade, right? Maybe a couple times during the game, you guys have beaten him on a fade. Maybe your job is just to run him off and you let him feel your speed. You let him get, you give him a quick release off the line. You really make him turn his hips and run with you, right? But that's why it's so important to be able to cut on a dime and use your guys' hips to change direction rather than slowing down into a break because it's got to happen on a dime. Now, when we're peeking back for this ball here, you see how Fulcan is able to just snap right now. Now, one thing I think and why he kind of drifts on this break a little bit is because this snap, he doesn't get as low. It's like a heavy step, but he doesn't get as low as I would like. On the second step, he gets low, but he's still out in like three, four, five, six. He's out of this thing. Maybe took a little bit too long at the top of the route, right? I think those steps could have been cut down and we could cut down and again. Like I've said before, it's not about cutting out steps. It's about cutting down time. But when you make that initial snap with that inside leg on this comeback, it's got to be violent, man. That thing's got to be super violent. you got to bring your chin to your knee. you got to get low. And we're really snapping on this thing. We're not slowing down into it and then snapping with my outside leg. If we want to snap on this inside leg, let's really commit to it. Let's really be violent because if you're violent, that's a lot harder for this guy to react. But as soon as we start to slow down and we take these extra steps, that's when that DB is able to make a play on this thing, right? Or he has more, op- more of an opportunity to make a play on this thing, right? 
right? But again, that's how you see, even with not the cleanest break in the world, he was still able to sell vertical and still able to get space simply because he pushed vertical and made this DB believe. You've got to make that DB believe that you're just trying to run right by him. And then when we're here, he does a pretty good job of accelerating out. His ball's a little bit overthrown. But again, I think our break could have been a little bit better, but overall, pretty good job selling vertical and creating some separation. Let's watch this thing full speed one more time. So he comes off here, pushes up vertical, peeks back with those eyes, snaps it off right now, makes sure we accelerate out and we're ready for that ball. Okay, so now he's going to be right here where this arrow is pointed. Now, again, we're going to be talking about how when you guys got to run an out route against his own coverage concept, how, again, selling vertical. That's kind of the theme of this video, how we can sell vertical, how we can get this DB to turn his hips and how we can get that DB to run with me. So you see when he's here, he's pushing up, he's stepping on his toes. One of the most important things that you guys can do, and DB is not in a bad, DB did not play this thing bad at all. But again, like I was talking about, the inches that you need in this game, that's 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 the difference between NFL ball and college, especially college and high school. I think that's like probably the big, well, NFL, college, yes, but I don't have experience with that. But from college to high school, that's probably, that's a huge jump in terms of the windows that you guys have for separation, right? So when we're here, and we're closing this distance with this DB, and he's turning his hips to the inside, right? That's because I'm pushing vertical and I'm trying to make him believe. Now, what's his, when I make this break back to the outside, this DB's fine. He's just going to speed turn on it, right? So I got to make sure that my break is clean, that I make sure my break is sudden, and that I'm accelerating out of this break because that's what's going to get me some separation or the most separation as possible, right? So this D does a great job, full game here, of pushing vertical, trying to get this DB to turn his hips, and again, stepping on his toes. That's the thing. Now, here's the thing. Um, you guys got to, especially against zone coverage, you guys got to be able to step on his toes as much as possible, right? So now, if your route, let's say his route is at the 30 here, and that's where he's supposed to break. Let's say he's maybe just like a quick little 10-yard out rather than a 15-yard out and breaking this thing, or almost like a 20-yard out breaking this thing up to 40. Let's say it's like a 15, 10-yard out. You can only step on his toes so much, so that's why it's important that you come out fast. That's why it's important that you're closing the distance quick. You're selling with pad level. You're selling with body language to really get him to get on his horse and get out of there, right? Because when you make this stick, you see how when he breaks this thing off right here, DB's speed turning. DB's got good instincts. He knows where this thing is coming, right? So I got to make sure, what do I have to do right here? That stick has got to be sudden, and you got to push off of that brake leg because that's what's going to give you some explosion to the sideline. When you stick and you're able to push off of that thing, that's going to shoot you back out. Now, you got to use your arms to drive you out of this brake, and if this ball was put a little bit more towards the sideline, I think it would have been an easier play for him, but great job making this catch in traffic. That's how you finish a play right there, right? You get as much separation as you possibly can, especially running an out route against zone coverage like this. That's very tough. That's not an easy task to do. So if you can get as much separation as possible, you pop this thing off, you accelerate towards the sideline. Let's make this catch in traffic. Let's go up with strong grip. Let's make sure I catch this thing, secure it, put it away, rip it away from the DB so he's not able to make a play on it. That's a great rider. Let's watch it again full speed one more time. Again, selling vertical. Get that DB to turn his hips. Step on his toes. Some cases when he turns around like this, you maybe want to attack this weak hip, but now, look what this can set up. I'll play the clip full speed one more second. We'll get on to the next route. But look what this sets up. This can set up a break here, and maybe he throws a rocker step to this blind spot, and we force that DB to speed turn, and I run a dig. Maybe I snap down, and I give him a one, two, three, and I work that fake throw by, and I snap it off. There's so many different things that you guys can do when we push vertical and when we get this DB to sell, because this sets up a million different things. Maybe we just give a head fake, bam. We give him a one, two, then I break on that post, and I'm wide open, and you don't think an offensive coordinator is going to be able to see that. An offensive coordinator will see that this DB's playing that speed turn pretty good and will make him pay for it. So that's so many. there's so many different options that you guys can do, but it comes from selling vertical number one. Let's watch it again full speed. So he's coming off here, bursting up, get the DB to turn, break this thing off, make sure we accelerate, snap my head around, make a play. It's a great job finishing the play. So now we're going to be looking at this like circus route right here. We're mainly going to be talking at the top of the route, how when you're able to restack, you could do a whole lot with this DB, pretty much anything you want. So you see how he attacks his leverage, he gives him the inside. So he gives this little head and shoulder fake and makes this break, right? So you might think, oh, this is an outside breaking route. Why is he taking an inside release like this, right? Because DB gave him the inside release, right? So when we come off and we attack this DB's leverage and we give him this move and he's sitting to the inside, why try to force something and then we have to reap back and then have to work out? If he's giving us this inside release, let's take the inside release. Let's work. Let's dip this inside shoulder. So we want to dip. That's the thing. When you guys take that inside release, you could dip that shoulder or an outside release even. But anytime you throw that one, two, and this DB's going to get hit hands, you all could almost rip underneath to be physical to get those hands off. Because when we get in a situation where we get the hands off of the DB, I get this little head and shoulder fake. So he's here, one, two. And again,
again, it's just a slight head and shoulder lean, head and shoulder throw to the outside that gets this DB to undercut it. Because if we get in a situation where I restack a DB and he doesn't have hands on me, he's going to be just solely playing your hips and your upper half. So if you could throw your upper half to the outside and then accelerate off this break, that's going to get us a lot of separation. That's exactly what he does. You see how well he's able to run out of there. Great route again. Another clip from his senior ball. I'm excited to get more clips of this guy so we can break down more film. Really excited to watch him play. So again, he's here. Pushes up vertical. One, two. Throw that head and shoulder fake. Make sure we accelerate out. Great route. All right, guys. I really want to thank you for watching. I really appreciate it. Again, if you guys have any questions at all, please leave those in the comments. I'll get back to you as soon as possible. And again, guys, if you want to improve your hands or receiver, you got to get better catching. Check out that link in the description. It says improve your hands in 30 days. I'll see you guys next time.